Well, first of all, good evening and thank you all for tuning in. My name is Eric Osgood. I'm the Emergency Management Director for the Town of Johnson. It is beginning to become apparent that we are starting to experience a leveling off of new positive coronavirus numbers in Lamoille and around the state. While any death is tragic, and we have experienced two in here in Lamoille, the death rate has slowed as well. If you were able to listen in to the governor's news conference today, plans were shared for some slow opening of the, and in the governor's word, the spigot, a quarter turn. Now is as important as ever to maintain the discipline and have an orderly, slow, deliberate move to a more normalcy in our lives while watching the data. I have to say that I'm very proud of what I have seen here in Johnson with the compliance to all of the mitigation measures put in place. And we have yielded very good results with relatively few positives in the county. So kudos off to everybody. We need to keep up that good work for everyone for a little longer. I'm gonna now pivot over to the town and select board initiatives. The May 10th is the final property tax uh, payment due date. After this is when significant late penalties and interest accrual starts to happen. The select board is very committed to extending the penalty and interest charges and will be deciding the method as well as the length of extension for individuals or businesses needing this help. This spring is the scheduled townwide reappraisal rollout. The select board will be hearing the pros and cons of delaying this for one year. You should be hearing these outcomes within the next week or two. As many of you know, the chancellor of the colleges, Jeff Spaulding, is making some very significant change re recommendations to the college trustees to include the closure of the Johnson campus. We were made aware of this possibility this week and have been reaching out to our legislators as well as any of the board trustees that any of us knew personally. The closure of our campus would not only be financially devastating to Johnson, however, also a loss of our heritage. As all of you know, the college or upper ed higher education has been in Johnson in some form for well over a century. We will continue our efforts to do what we can to minimize the impact of any changes to Johnson. I would encourage anyone who knows a college trustee to reach out and share your thoughts. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Gordy as the village trustee chair. Thank you, Eric. Uh, speaking on wearing a different hat, um, there's a modification to the burn ban in Johnson starting tomorrow. If there's uh, rain or a, a wet, misty area, whatever, uh, that they will be a, able to burn. So give me a call, go through the normal process on a home phone at 635-7550 to get a permit. But uh, if it's wet and so forth, I've had at least 12, 15 people call in the last two weeks that would like to burn. So it makes more sense for the people that are home that want to clean up, to give me a call and get out there and burn because it's better to burn now than in the middle of May. So. And if you still want a small campfire in a, a pit or a tire rim or a little fireplace, something really small, then go ahead and burn. But uh, so that's being a new process for that. And as far as anything else, as far as the new news, I guess I would leave it alone to we'll see what happens Monday before we get too involved in it, other than showing our support. Unless Meredith would like to have something to add, I would welcome her uh, anything from. Meredith, first statement. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Gordy. Meredith, did you, did you have anything you wanted to add? Sure. Um, just as Gordy mentioned, uh, we're certainly concerned with the potential closure or the proposed closure of the college campus. Um, and we're reviewing it in terms of uh, the impact on, potential impact on village operations. Um, I will post a little bit of information tonight on the village um, Facebook page as well as the municipal website, just with some information about um, how that potential closure could impact the village utilities. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith. Uh, next, I'd like to turn it over to Nat Kinney, who has a couple of announcements. Thanks, good afternoon. I just have a, I had it up on my computer a second ago. 
an announcement that a volunteer from the food shelf asked me to share. Nat, if you can't find it, I have an update from Lillian also. Uh, would you go ahead and give that update and I'll try to find this. I'll use my giant note card. They are still under their normal operating hours, Tuesday and Friday, nine to noon, and Wednesday, four to six. You will be picking the food up on the porch as they're practicing the physical distancing of six feet or more. So please wait in the yard area and don't come onto the porch until it's your turn. Um, there's donation bins at Sterling Market and you can send a check to PO Box 17 if you wanna help out with their efforts to feed. They are seeing more people. They're also seeing more um, donations. So they wanted us to thank all their volunteers and thank all of the community members who have increased their donations at this time. And um, if you're in Sterling Market, there's that box right at the uh, cashier's area. You can throw whatever um, goods you have in there. They're looking for pasta, canned fruits, um, easy items for families to prepare and store and things kids can prepare themselves are always a nice idea, snacks and things like that. So that's the update I got from Lillian today. So again, hours are Mondays nine to noon, Wednesdays six to four, Four, uh, four to six, Fridays, nine to noon. Um, the food shelf currently needs cereal, canned fruit, canned meats, cheese, peanut butter, canned soups, baked beans, rice mixes, laundry soap, paper towel, and of course, toilet paper. Um, and um, yeah, that's, that's the donation. Obviously they're expecting, we're expecting, um, um, uh, more uh, strain on the food shelf than than or more usage on the food shelf than usual, and it is a welcome place for anyone who needs food assistance. So uh, please reach out. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Nat. And tonight we are honored to have as a featured speaker Secretary Lindsay Curl of the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Secretary. Curl will speak to the stimulus package benefits, what is available for individuals and businesses, and how to access. Following her remarks, Lindsay, as well as the Johnson Emergency Management team and other substance experts on this broadcast will be available for a Q&A. We will end our broadcast with our recreational coordinator and some local talent entertainment. It now brings me great pleasure to introduce and to thank her for taking time to be here Secretary Curl. Lindsay, go ahead. Hi there, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you perfect. Thank you so much for having me here this evening. Um, you can imagine that it feels like the days and the weeks are all running together, but today we definitely had some good news. Um, as, as you mentioned, Eric, we, uh, you know, the governor shared that the, the Vermonter sacrifices are really paying off. And as a result, we can begin to turn that spigot a quarter turn. And so there was a, a little bit of relief, I think, for a lot of Vermonters who were ready to get back to work um, in some small groups, uh, small micro groups. So as you all can imagine, I'll just tell you a little tiny bit about me. I know that the goal wasn't, wasn't to do that, but um, I'm a I'm a Vermonter, born and raised and living on the same land. I'm actually the seventh generation living on my family's farm land here in Montpelier. But my father's family was from Johnson. So um, you're talking about the college and, you know, definitely hit me pretty hard today too, knowing, you know, that the land that the college is on was once my, or my ancestors had land that now is occupied by the, the college. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking of you all. I know that's, that's disappointing news. And, uh, both of my dogs are trying to get in the room right now, which is very funny. <laughs> so if you can hear some knocking, <laughs> they're banging on the door. Um, so anyway, um, I, I'm a small business owner or a former small business owner for two decades and uh, owned a, a gas station and convenience store with my husband as well as a trucking company and a deli. And I am a, um, an accountant by education and training. And I stepped into my role at the Department of Labor three years ago. And you can imagine right now watching uh, what my coworker and colleague is going through there 
and the frustration that a lot of people feel because the volume has has skyrocketed with respect to the COVID-19 um, adverse impacts. Never, ever did I imagine that I would find myself in a role where I was actually asking entrepreneurs and creative people and business owners to suspend their operations. So it's been really hard. And I know as hard as I have felt in doing this, um, I feel strong in my conviction that we were putting public health first. And for that, I can, I can do it. Um, but I just, I, I recognize what the impact is. And having been a small business owner, I, I shudder to think about what I would be dealing with right now if I did still own that business. Um, and so I'm here for Vermonters. I'm, I'm here to help connect you. Um, as you may have heard, um, the federal government uh, issued a fair amount of money through the Stimulus Act, um, the CARES Act, and the loans that were called the PPP, pay Payroll Protection Plan loans, were very, very popular. And um, there was $342 billion that was put into that, that program. And it was rolled out last Friday. And since then, nationally, one point, over 1 1.6 million loans were approved at the $342 billion. In the state of Vermont, nearly 7,000 loans were approved for over $1 billion. The average size of those loans is around $206,000. So for those of you that aren't aware, um, the, these loans, while you're probably wondering why I'm talking about them if we're out of money, we're hopeful that in the next round um, that, that, the, uh, that Congress will approve more money to be put into these programs. The, the good thing about the payroll protection plan loans is that if you use the money to pay payroll and a few other approved expenses, it's a forgivable loan. The challenging part for this was um, it's eight weeks of payroll. So there are certain industries that are telling us this really wasn't super helpful to them because they expect to be closed down a lot longer. So we have been communicating with um, our congressional delegation. Um, Senator Lee, he has been front and center on these negotiations. And, you know, we've been sharing what we're hearing from Vermont employers in terms of what, you know, not only do we need more money in there, but we need some of the terms to change so that they will meet the needs of, of more broadly of the businesses that are being impacted, not just in our state, but around the nation. So we're not alone. Um, we also had, um, we learned that about $4.7 million will come to us in um, through community development block grants. And we're still waiting on some guidance for that. But some of you may be familiar with those, um, maybe from tropical storms in the past or whatnot. But these are usually a little more, we're able to a little more nimbly respond um, to, to community needs if they have a good plan. Um, but as I mentioned, those that money is forthcoming and you know we'll have more on that. Um, we have an entire website um, built, it's accd.vermont.gov. And if you go to that website, there's an entire COVID-19 resource page for employers and individuals and communities. So when you go onto that website, if you're an individual, it will walk you through what your options are in terms of getting some financial relief. And it did talk about the one-time payout that I think people are starting to get checks um, it talks about unemployment insurance, as well as what's called the PUA, it's Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. So the reason the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance was created is because the unemployment insurance covers folks who buy into that insurance fund. And that is not normally an independent contractor or a self-employed person. So when this pandemic, when the crisis hit, um, there were a whole host of people that were quickly shut down that had no, um, no, nowhere to turn. So luckily the federal government uh, created this, this additional um, unemployment benefit for folks who, who weren't on the traditional unemployment insurance plan. And we're trying to stand that up. And the hope is that that'll be ready for people to start filing on Tuesday. So if anybody knows of folks who um, you know, might be 
I, I hate to mention sectors, but hairdressers, um, you know, people that, that sole proprietors, uh, you know, landscapers, folks that were, were shut down for a period of time or maybe are continuing to be shut down, really encourage them to turn to that uh, because they, you know, whatever they will qualify based on their own income, they also will additionally get an extra $600 um, added to what they would, you know, qualify based on their income. So, you know, hopefully that will really help folks and help them keep up with, you know, their payments and whatnot. But if folks are struggling um, to make their payments, the lenders have been very flexible about offering some relief to folks. So anyway, there's, there's a fair amount, you know, that folks can try to get some help if they're in, you know, individuals or sole proprietors, independent contractors. And again, that's um, when you go to our website, you'll find the, the um, link to the individuals. For employers, I mentioned the payroll protection plan. There was something called an emergency injury disaster loan or economic injury disaster loan. I believe that's out of money too. But again, if that's refunded, that's another source for businesses. Um, there's definitely some um, loan deferrals through like SBA. I'm thinking like 504 loans and 7A loans. But again, that's all on my website. I, I wish I could recite that and what, what that entails, but that's there. And then as a community, um, again, we we're waiting for more guidance on this, but I would keep checking back to that, that link. And we will talk about when we have town halls or different ways that you can uh, learn how you might um, get some help for your community um, in the wake of, of this uh, disaster. So i um, trying to think what else you might want to know about um, a really, as I mentioned, Oh, if you are, um, if you know of employers, uh, we want to, you know, I know there's a lot of help and in, in, there's a lot of great things going on in, in Johnson. Um, if you, you really do have a lot of really great assets in Johnson, there's great uh, employers there and great outdoor recreation opportunities. And so um, I just, you know, want, want folks to feel like they have support. And again, on our website, if they sign up for our newsletter, we're keeping people posted and um, up to date. And as we learn things coming out of, you know, federal, federal delegation and also our state legislators. And I just, I really, I really want to thank everybody um, again this is really, really hard stuff. And I know that you're all probably looking around at your friends and your family and yourselves and, and it's scary and it's overwhelming. And I just, I'm really grateful. Uh, Vermonters are amazing and, and I shouldn't be surprised that people step up, but they do and they help each other. And, you know, we have to emotionally help each other through this too. It's not just the financial impact, but um, as I mentioned, I just, you know, on behalf of the administration, I want to say, Again, you know, look to me. I'm happy to try to connect people with the help they need. Um, but we're going to have to work through it together. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, and I, if you can just stick around for a few yeah. minutes. Before we open it up for questions, I got Leah Hollenberger on who's from the college who'd like to say a few words. Uh, and I would turn it over to Leah if you're there. Um, I, again, it's been a difficult day. I work at Northern Vermont University and I just wanted to make sure, uh, I know you spoke at the beginning of the, the meeting um, that Chancellor Jeb Spaulding shared today uh, the recommendations that he was going to make to the Vermont State College System Board of Trustees on Monday. Um, the recommendations are a uh, restructuring, a uh, reconfiguration, um, a consolidation of the system as a way to ensure access to higher education um, for Vermonters of all ages um, in a way that's sustainable um, far into the future. Um, some of you participated in a board meeting that was held at the, on the Johnson campus last fall around the white paper uh, in which they outlined issues facing higher education um, across the country, but also the Vermont State College's uh, declining enrollment, aging infrastructure, um, pricing competition, um, and, and quite honestly, decades of underfunding from the state. Uh, at the time, they 
they were looking for ideas and, and asking for comments and suggestions um, about ways to um, make the system sustainable. With the COVID pandemic, the impact on the system has been as it has been for everyone in every sector, every single person, um, really catastrophic. And so there now is the financial pressure is greatly intensified and the timeline for that system change that the board was discussing um, has accelerated. So his recommendations, which came out today, and I'm happy to share with you if you've not seen them, um, we did try to distribute them uh, to a variety and a depth and breadth of people today. It's on the vsc.edu website, vsc.edu. The chancellor's recommendations are um, multiple and they do affect every um, institution in, in the, the system. Um, with the exception of the uh, community colleges of Vermont. Uh, the chancellor is recommending that NVU and Castleton University be consolidated where uh, NVU will be consolidated into Castleton University, the best academic programs of both schools um, will be housed on the residential campus that is Castleton. Uh, the Vermont Tech Technical College Randolph campus will, will be closed and they will focus their academic programs in the Williston area and other sites that they have available through the state. Um, it has a massive impact on both communities, Johnson and Linden, as well as Randolph. Um, it has a massive impact on our staff. Um, so these are his recommendations. The board is meeting on Monday at one o'clock um, to consider his recommendations. I put up earlier in the chat, if you have comments or would like to offer suggestions or ideas, um, the link is on uh, in the chat and you can also go to vsc.edu um, and leave your comments there. They're using a survey monkey. Um, link to do that. Um, and I, I'm happy to take questions, but I, it, I, you know, the board has not, the board has to vote on the recommendations. So um, I don't know how much I can answer. I've, I've shared what I, what I know. Thank you, Leah. At this point, I uh, would open it up to any questions. Uh, we've thrown quite a bit of stuff out there at you from Lindsay at the state level, uh, as well as our local level and the college uh, or university. Open it up for any questions. Nat. Yeah, question for Secretary Curley. Um, thanks for being here. I work, my um, employer uh, is Concept2 in Morrisville um, statewide probably responsible for somewhere around a thousand jobs or so uh, throughout the state. Um, it's a very socially responsible company and it's been taking this, um, this stay at home order very seriously and the health of the employees is really paramount. Um, and during the shutdown have been doing a lot to mitigate um, contact and to uh, in, put in place social distancing practices in our manufacturing processes. And um, I'm wondering if there's any possibility to have a discussion with the state about um, uh, going back to work earlier than um, the May 15th that the governor's put in. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I obviously don't want to overpromise and then to deliver here, but I would welcome um, a coordinated effort of, of folks who can, uh, what's the word, folks who are experts in the manufacturing industry that could help us see the way that folks could come back to work and work safely. Um, I know that we have a full team that are working on these things, but Nat, if you want to pop me an email, I will gladly 
point you in the direction of somebody who you can give an education to on this. And we would really welcome that. Um, my email is Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, period, curly, spelled K-U-R-R-L-E, at vermont.gov. And um, but that goes for anybody on the call. Like if, if there's any questions you have or you want to reach out to me, I'm happy to be a resource for you and try to try to help get questions answered. But yes, now I would we would love to chat about that. I think, you know, the governor wanted to really start with, as I mentioned, these really small um, small units to open up. Um, so, you know, if you can do something with the twos, that's great right now. But hopefully we can continue to be healthy and safe and yeah. um, and broaden it a little bit, you know, every in some small phases, small jumps and not wait until May 15th. I think that would be our ideal. That would be great to have the discussion. Can you just give your email address once again? Yeah, yeah so it's Lindsay spelled L-I-N-D-S-A-Y dot Curly, K-U-R-R-L-E at Vermont. It's spelled out vermont.gov. All right, well, thanks very much. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. I have a question for the secretary as well. Uh, so in the broader conversation about the potential closures of the colleges, are they being viewed as economic and community development tools themselves? Um, and if they, you know, if there is any data that your agency has, could that be made available to the trustees while they're making this decision? Because I for one know this town and a lot of the Northeast kingdom and you know a lot of the area around Randolph, it's going to be hurting very, very badly if you rip away one of the primary economic drivers of those areas. So, yeah, um, you know, I I'm probably not a lot farther along than you in terms of learning this news today. Um, I I again I I'm sad to think that this is what it's come to, and I don't know all of the details behind the dollars or the conversations that that might be driving this, but. Um, yes, I know what an impact this would be to your community. And if there's any information or data that our agency has, I think it's probably already been shared with um, folks in the industry. So um, I'll certainly try to think about what we might share with board members, um, you know, today so they can can have that for the weekend. But um yeah, I mean, it, it's tough. I mean, we've, we've seen this happen. It, it's Vermont's not isolated in this. It's definitely happening around New England and Vermont in particular because we, you know, have so few students compared to what we had, you know, two decades ago even. Um, we have anticipated that, that we were going to struggle a bit and we've been concerned. And so, yeah, it's heartbreaking. I, like, as I mentioned, I grew up here, but I wish I had the answers and I know it's an economic development tool and we're going to, again, we're going to be here to work with you. And, and, you know, I don't know how the board will decide on Monday. I, I really don't know what their position is, but no matter what, um, the state, the, the community, everybody will try to pull together and, and, you know, find, find a, a path forward. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, Eric, this is David Manning. Um, this is a question for Leia. I see in the chat you posted a, a survey monkey. Is that the best place to give feedback to the Board of Trustees? Is there an email we should use or is, do you want us to use that survey monkey? I have some feedback I'd love to give them. Yes, the board has asked that written comments be put through, through survey monkey. Um, I think that's that's a recent change just within the past day, day and a half, because I think they're trying to manage the um, enormous amount of comments that they're receiving. Um, so please do use that SurveyMonkey link. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'd like a chance to ask the secretary a question. Go ahead, Walter. Thank you. Thank you, secretary, for coming with us. Um, I, as a small business owner on Main Street in Johnson, who also helps a lot of small businesses on Main Street on Johnson in the area, I just want to alert you to the fact that these programs aren't helping the truly small mom and pop businesses. When you talk about the Paycheck Protection Program, 
corporations, the larger businesses were allowed to apply on the third. The sole proprietors weren't even allowed to apply till the 10th. By the time they got their applications in, the money was gone. Um, these businesses really don't have a lot of employees. You talk about the hairdressers. You mentioned the economic disaster loans. Well, bottom line is they're gonna get nothing from that either because this SBA, contrary to congressional intent, has said, oh, we're gonna allocate this $1,000 per employee. And on top of all this, the unemployment for self-employed people isn't up and running yet. So these small independent businesses are basically, no, you aren't getting money here. No, you aren't getting money here. And your last recourse, unemployment isn't even up and running. So when you, I hear people talk about small businesses, really small businesses are really last in line and are getting nothing. And I hope, I realize this is not your doing, but you have the ear of some people. And next time these monies come available, really, we should be put at the front of the line, not at the back of the line, because we're the people who need to feed our families on a weekly basis. And realistically, I was probably one of the first people in line for all these programs, because I was testing the system out before I recommended it to my clients. Guess what I got? Nothing. And ultimately, I couldn't have been in any faster than any other sole proprietor, and I'm getting nothing. So ultimately, these are our main street businesses. These are the mom and pop shops. If these businesses aren't helped, we're going to become ghost towns. Never mind that we lost the college. We're going to lose all our main street businesses too. So please, when these things, more money becomes available, put the really small mom and pop businesses up front of the head of the line, please. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. And, and I'm sorry, I, I, I hear you. I, I will make sure I, I have been advocating for that. Um, I do know that, that small businesses, and I'm talking truly small, I mean, are the heartbeat of our state. So we, uh, we're also trying to figure out whether there are any state programs we can take funds from and push them out. But as you can imagine, you know, folks aren't Pay, they aren't able to pay taxes right now and we're right. So it's, it's a struggle, but absolutely. I will fight for you. Thank you. You bet. Okay. I see a hand up on iPad. I don't know who it is, uh, but your mic is disabled. If you want to go ahead, you'll have to enable your mic first. Hey, Eric, it's Greg Tatro. How are hey, Greg. you? I, Lindsay, uh, we're wondering about this college, uh, as our demographics keep getting older and older, and I know the governor has been pushing this uh, for the last few years. I mean, I don't know any other way to get young people to stay in Vermont but have state colleges. So, And I'm also wondering about if the governor, whatever this board comes up with, has any say in, in where this goes. I mean, this is going to cripple um, the state where we most need jobs and help. I mean, this, is, uh, this isn't good at all. So I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, thanks, Greg. I, um, as I mentioned before, I'm really, you know, just learning this as well. And as you can imagine, it's been a hectic day and I've not been able to really get to the bottom of any of this either. But um, I, I know, I hear you. And the only thing I can say is, I hope, you know, I hope that, Sometimes people say when one door closes, another opens. I'm not suggesting that the college shouldn't be there. I pray it's there. Um, and, you know, everybody wants to see it stay there. I just, I don't have an answer for you. I'm just not in the, I, I'm not embedded in this conversation enough to be able to tell you. I, I don't, I don't know all the details behind it. It literally, I heard that the chancellor was going to make this recommendation, but I haven't been briefed on any of this personally. So I hear what you're saying. I think Johnson has so much to offer. I, there are so many, as I mentioned, there are so many great things in and around Johnson. And um, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm at a loss because I, I, can't, I can't make any promise right now other than to say, you know, you're on our minds and, and we'll do what we can. Thank you. I see a hand up from the Honorable Dan Noyes. 
Thank you, Eric. Hey, I just wanted to uh, weigh in on this. I definitely am very concerned about this and want to let people know that um, Matt Hill and I have been on the phone all day yesterday and today on this, and I plan on being pretty much the weekend. Um, this is not the time for the state to close this college during this economic downturn. The government's responsibility is to prop up communities in times of disaster and times like this not not do this so uh i'm gonna be spending I, i'm gonna do everything i can i've been on the phone with the trustees um you know trying to make sure that they understand the impact this will have on our community um so uh i'm available if someone wants to call me uh, email me and talk to me about this i'm really interested in your stories as well so that um when this shows up in the legislature uh, I can make sure my colleagues know the impact this is going to have on our community. So just want to thank you. So, uh, before you go, Beth, I saw the uh, equally honorable Matt Hill had his hand up. Your brother. <laughs> He's always vying for, for my spot, Eric. <laughs> that's that's uh, what happens when you're, when you're the youngest one. You know, you get your way more often. Um, so... Um, let me uh, uh, let, let me just quickly combine um, uh, uh, the comments from from Greg and Dan, uh, and then cede the rest of my time to my older sister. And uh, and so uh, just quickly, uh, I got a email just barely from a member from Hyde Park um, who gives the conservative economic impact of this Johnson alone, not not including Lyndon, as over a hundred million dollar uh, economic impact on the on the on the on Johnson itself, uh, and you know, Lamar County in general, so that's a huge uh, impact. Um, and uh, you know, not to mention, uh, you know, Lindsay, as Lindsay knows, um, you know, we really try to keep younger people in Vermont. And what better way to push younger people away from Vermont than to close down the state college system? I think it's it's insane to me um, that this that Jed Spalding wouldn't be um, more creative to to, to find solutions. Um, and so uh, if, uh, you, if anybody wants to um, do the survey monkey, um, uh, the, Nat posted a link on the chat there, you should do that. Um, and be, uh, feel free to uh, you know, uh, suggest Jeb Spalding should no longer have a job. And, and, and with that, um, I will uh, let Beth uh, do her jam. Thanks, Matt. Hi, Lindsay. Thanks for joining. Um, it's nice to have state representation on our little town meetings. Um, my question for you is, you know, I was going to ask before I heard some um, feedback from other questions, whether or not you were involved in um, any of the discussions leading up to um, the agency's rec recommendation to close the colleges and hearing that you were not or your agency wasn't um, is extremely concerning to me. And I think that, um, you know, anytime a state makes a big decision like that, I would think it would pull in any um, agency that would feel the impact of that very large decision. So the fact that you weren't part of that recommendation, your agency, and frankly, quite a few other agencies um, is extremely concerning to me. Um, and I really hope that you and your agency fight for a voice um, with the board on Monday. Um, I don't know how you would do that necessarily, but I think that it is critically important for you to have a voice um, because you cannot create community development within our community without, uh, by removing something that is vastly larger than anything that is gonna replace it. Um, and, you know, the announcement is really about removing hubs from all of northern Vermont. The only impacted community that would not feel a significant loss is uh, Chittenden County, which is already a metropolitan for Vermont standard, right, community. So you're literally taking away these hubs in the entire northern Vermont. So um, to say that doesn't impact your agency, I don't, there's no leg to stand on um, to not have you guys involved in the conversation. So I really hope that you'll fight to have a voice in this for all of us um, and encourage agencies along um, the, you know, you work alongside to also have a voice. It's more important now than ever 
to have our agencies working together, not against each other. I hear a lot that agencies work against each other, and that's not, you know, where we should be headed. We should be a single, united force who's all supporting the same um, need. It should be about the greater good of our state, not about what one agency wants or need, quote unquote, needs, right? Um, so that's just my plea for you to please fight and get a voice in front of the board. Thank you, Beth. I will, I will certainly be having some conversations over the weekend with uh, some coworkers who, and some, some board members I know. But um, as I mentioned, I, I apologize. I just, it, it came as a, a surprise to me. To, no, to I don't. Honest. I mean, I'm not, I'm not yeah, blaming you no, at all. I'm just. <laughs> I know. And I just want to say, I love that there's some sibling banter going on here. (laughs) (laughs) This is what I do love about Vermont. (laughs) Thank you. Okay. uh, I see Dan's hand went back up, but Greg and Matt still have your hands up. I'm not sure if you had something else you wanted to add. Well, I thought my hand went down, but I did have something to add. And I mean, this Jeb Spalding fellow that's running this thing, we got to get him out of the picture. If, yeah. if, he's been, if he's been running this project for the last four or five or six years, and this is what he comes up with, he shouldn't have a job. So that's one comment. We got to get rid of him. There's no reason that college can't survive. It's a lack of leadership. If he ran it like a business, he wouldn't be where he is today. He's got to go. That's our only chance of saving this thing. Thank you. I'll put my hand down. Oh, go ahead. Yes, uh, I'm Rockin' Ron Carter, I, uh, Friendly Pirate. I also work at Smuggler's Notch Resort with my friend Lisa Cruz. And um, in addition to what uh, uh, Greg said, uh, Greg Tatro said about um, keeping the youth here uh, for education, um, a lot of Johnson State students also work at Smuggler's Notch Resort. So it's a source for an employment as well. Um, so, and I believe someone else mentioned the impact on Lamoille County. It's not just Johnson. Uh, there's a lot bigger picture here. Thank you. Uh, Greg, uh, Eric, if it'd be okay if I jumped in again. Sure. Um, so I just wanted to share a perspective for uh, really for our legislators that are on the call and I'll be emailing this. So thank you for posting information, but uh, uh, more than, uh, half, uh, 15 of the 28 licensed teachers at my school uh, earned their degree at Johnson State or NVU Johnson. And uh, when I have put out um, postings for vacant positions, I don't get overwhelmed with numbers of applicants. And most of the ones I get uh, attended NVU. And the reality is that people who went to UVM and St. Mike's do not want to drive from Burlington to Johnson every day to make less money than they can make in Chittenden County. And so I, I envision a, a very uh, big concern over finding qualified teachers in Johnson Elementary, High Park Elementary, Lamoille Union High School, uh, Eden Central School in, in years to come without a, a program, local program that draws people to this beautiful area and gets them hooked on it. Uh, I think we're going to see um, having less qualified teachers and hiring people without licenses uh, that we're putting on provisional licenses because we won't have the candidates. So I think it's a it's an impact that can have a a long-term impact on students if we can't get good licensed people to teach. Eric, I just want to add one thing, Stan Noyes, yeah. um, that there is a, a large group of representatives and senators uh, across Northern Vermont that are really concerned about this. And both Linden and, you know, down through VTC, because that's part of the deal. So um, just so people know, it's not just Matt and I, it's, there's a lot, there's some, probably 20, 30 representatives and senators that are, you know, that are interested in trying to figure out some solutions to this. So uh, I even know the Rural Economic Caucus is going to weigh in on this, which is a group of legislators. So um, just want people to know it's, uh, this is really um, generating a lot of, um, a lot of thought. And, you know, we do have uh, chair of appropriations is over in Linden um, and Senate Chair of Appropriations over there, and then we have Senator Westman. So, you know, we definitely um, have some some voice here. So, uh, hopefully, we can come up with a, a good solution. Thank you, Dan. Anyone else? Eric Peggy Williams. Yes, go ahead, Peggy. 
So um, I don't know everyone on the call, but I'm a resident of Johnson um, and I'm president emerita of Linden State. So I've been uh, having a lot of conversations in the last 24 hours. I wrote the governor yesterday about and about another 12 or 14 people, including Dan and Matt. Uh, Joe Benning is a graduate of Linden. I've been in touch with him. So I um, am pretty stunned. I know there have been challenges for years. There were challenges when I was there, but I never, ever expected uh, the notion of closing both Johnson and Linden. Um, it leaves Northern Vermont without access to any public institution for a, a bachelor's degree. Um, and for a student who wants to commute, for example, there's no way you're going to commute to Castleton from St. Johnsbury or St. Albans or Johnson. So uh, it seems to me keeping one of the two open, even as a commuting campus with no residence halls, perhaps would might be a scenario, but I'm worried about the speed with which this is moving um, in the middle of a crisis like this pandemic. Um, doesn't feel like the best time to make big decisions, but they're in financial, you know, terrible financial shape. So I think weighing in with any of your ideas uh, is helpful. Um, I uh, we will hang on till Monday and see what happens, but I'm doing everything I can to talk with as many people as possible. Thank you, Peggy. Your voice probably carries a little further than ours. I don't know, all of them carry. <laughs> I think that point about teachers is really, even for next year, there are school districts expecting to have student teachers. I don't know what happens to people who are in the pipeline, like who are college juniors in, in elementary ed. Um, and if they're at Johnson or Linden right now, if they go to, Ca I don't understand how any of that will work, let alone those graduates that do serve our small communities and would prefer to live here than in um, Burlington. So that's a really important point in terms of all of these colleges have historically been teachers college. And also we have a number of high schoolers who are taking college courses through Johnson State, well, through <laughs> Northern Vermont, but um, so that's yeah. an impact too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hey, Eric, it's Greg Stefanski. Greg. A question for Matt and Dan, given the proportion of this, the impact uh, that this might have on our community, it seems like uh, it's gonna be difficult for an individual uh, or even necessarily our, our town to uh, come up with and implement a solution. So uh, with based on what you two have heard so far, uh, what recommendations do you have in terms of something that we as you know, citizens in the community can do um, right now to help support uh, the, the kind of solution that's gonna be needed to uh, keep uh, NVU open. Matt, you wanna go first or you want me to go? <laughs> All right, I think the main thing is that people in the community um, should reach out to the board in that um, SurveyMonkey link that's in the, in the chat section. I also put it up on my Facebook page. People can email me, I'll email it to them or call me and I'll read it to them. We need to put a face and a voice with what impact this is gonna have on our community to this board. And so that they understand overwhelmingly um, and there's no question uh, in their mind what it will do. So I think that's the best thing we can do right now collectively is to really make sure that there's feedback. And then also if anybody knows any of the uh, folks on the board, they should reach out to them personally and, uh, and you know, let them know, let them know what this is going to do. I'll add that um, at the end of the day, the legislature can decide what does or does not happen. Um, you know, the, the board can, can make, uh, you know, the chancellor can propose any, any plan he wants to propose. The board can approve or shoot it down. At the end of the day, the legislature can remove the board and the chancellor. Um, if we want to, uh, if, if there's the will to do that. And I think there is the will to do that right now. For me, there is anyway. Um, so uh, so I'll just say that, uh, you know, even if, uh, you know, the chancellor is headstrong and the board agrees, uh, they still have to come back to the legislature to ask for money to mothball the building. Um, it's going to be a pretty hard sell to walk into a appropriations committee room and um, ask for money to close down uh, one of the biggest economic drivers in, nor in northern Vermont. Um, and ask for money, and then ask them to have more money than what we've given them over the past four years, only to have no return on that money whatsoever. Uh, I, I would, I, I welcome that argument, and I can't wait to have it. Um, and uh, I, you know, so at, at the end of the day, 
um, individual communities. Um, if you have access to another legislator, please reach out to them um, and uh, and you know make sure your voices are heard. We may have to um, once the stay at home order is lifted, we may have to uh, run a few buses and drive down to uh, the offices of Montpelier if uh, last case scenario if we have to do that. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I, like Dan said, make your voice heard. Um, I think uh, we have heard um, many voices. I know Dan has, I know I have over the past day or two. Um, and they are, there are many more. In fact, since I've been on this phone call, I've got four phone calls missed. Um, I'm Oops. assuming they are all about the college. Um, <laughs> so yeah, keep up, keep up, you know, be loud, um, get out there, do, you know, make sure every voice is heard. Thank you guys. Just can I, Eric, real quick. I mean, Matt and Dan, um, students, prospective students right now are sending out their deposits to, to where they're gonna go next fall. So if this, any rumor gets out about this, you, these people are gonna just leave in droves. I mean, it's gonna become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So this really needs to be killed and quickly, yeah. or this college is gonna go down whether we want to save it or not, because the students won't come. So how do we make this happen? Like stop on Monday so that the it, it was it was extremely irresponsible for them to put that out at this point. Um, you're right. You're 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 totally right. People are looking at being prospective students, and are you going to send a invest? Are you going to say, yeah, I'm going to go to NVU or whatever when you see this in the news? Um, this was totally irresponsible and should never have been done this way. So we should be I'll, right I'll now. We a good be, point. It's we should be recruiting in New York City. Say, escape the COVID mess and come to Vermont. <laughs> there you go. Um, and and uh, you know, and unfortunately, Jeb has already damaged the state college system by even talking about this. Uh, you know, before it even comes to the board, and uh, there's going to be a hit. You know, even if they get squashed on Monday, there's going to, you know, the MVU is going to take a hit and we're going to have, you know, hopefully we can use some stimulus money to backfill and, you know, and, and, and pray that, uh, you know, we can get the word out that, uh, you know, hey, uh, city folk, uh, rural Vermont's open, come on up. And, uh, but yeah, no, you're right. And it's uh, incredibly irresponsible for Jeb to, to say anything. And um, one more reason why he shouldn't have his job. Dan, I see your hand up again. No, okay. Is there anyone Sorry, else? No. <laughs> anyone else like to say, ask a question, have concerns, have something for Lindsay? If not, um, I think we had a a mixed bag of good news mixed in with some really uh, terrible news. But luckily, we always end it with a little bit of entertainment uh, to help with our mental health as well as our physical being. So with that, I'll turn it over to Lisa from the rec committee, the, or the rec coordinator. All right. So we're pivoting to a happier place now. Um, the town has been working with Johnson Works to put signs of hope out Lindsay, in our yard. Lisa, Lisa, can I just interrupt for one minute? Of course. And and shout out a big thank you to Lindsay for uh, coming in on our Zoom broadcast. Yes, thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for letting me spend my Friday evening with you. <laughs> Every Friday at five. We always have entertainment. <laughs> thank you. So Johnson Works has been putting out these positive signs of hope around town. I'm proposing this is the next one we put out everywhere, folks. Every window in town, every house. I am JSC class of 2009 and Andrew and I own our house and raise our kids here because I came for the college and dragged him back here with me because it's an amazing place. Um, to celebrate all I'm the, not too pumped. To celebrate all the great stuff, um, go to johnsonrecreationvt.com. That's where we have all our new pages highlighting the fun stuff we're doing while we are alone together. Um, this month, we're doing our April activity challenge with up to $250 in raffle prizes for local businesses. Um, and it, 
goes into different activities you can do, but you earn points doing things you're already doing. So you might as well enter to get a gift card to the pizza place or Red House or any of our local businesses. And the new one we came up with this week we're joining into is Miles for My Community. So on May 9th at 8 a.m., you can sign up and do a virtual race. And this is a fundraiser that'll raise money for the healthcare workers on the front lines of COVID-19 and also youth recreation. So it was a, it sort of fit nicely into all the stuff that we're doing. And I know Casey Romero, Casey, are you on the line? She might've, might or might not be here. She was wanted to talk about the- nope. uh, um, it, Can you hear me? I can, I, she's gonna, Casey's yeah, gonna good. update us on the um, use of the skate park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the good news is that our skate park will emerge, uh, our skate park, which has been so much built by Johnson State and other uh, students in, in this area. So you better believe that we are going to hop on to this issue major, in a major way. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to clarify for everybody and emphasize is that it, it's not that the entire skate park is closed. It's the skate park, the skateboarding terrain only that's closed. Uh, the bike tracks, the pump track, and the new mountain bike terrain, they are open. And, um, you know, it's fine for folks to bike there, uh, keeping six feet apart and all. Uh, biking, walking, uh, community garden is going to be in action when it gets a bit warmer. Um, and so it, it's not, a, it's not a blanket closure of the whole area. Uh, there, there is definitely some healthy use going on down there and that's it. Thank you, Casey. And that's the same old mill park is open for walking. The fields are open for use by individuals of the same household and just giving each other the proper physical distancing that we've been asked to observe. Um, I'd like to thank my friend Rock and Ron, the friendly pirate. He's agreed to come and play some uplifting music for us tonight. And so if you guys want to, we'll pause just a second before you start, Ron, because we like everyone to have an opportunity to get their children after all the boring adult talk. And if you have anyone you want to join you, call them in. Rock and Ron is going to entertain us with some upbeat Pirate shanties. Uh, before uh, we wait for the kids to join us, I want to thank Lisa for inviting me. I also want to recognize Brian Story and Meredith, who I'm working with on the Green Mountain Byway uh, Committee, um, and Greg Stefanski, who's been to several Rotary meetings uh, representing Rotary. I've met Daniel Noyes at several legislative breakfasts. Um, my friend Leah was on earlier. Uh, Unfortunately, she didn't have the best news, but, um, and then uh, Dawn and uh, Greg Tatro um, with Rotary, we're doing a, um, we just started this this year. It's a, a, a raffle to guess when Smuggler's Notch is going to reopen. Um, and uh, the proceeds, is, it's a 50-50 raffle, and the uh, the proceeds will go to um, the uh, um, rehabilitation center that Greg and Dawn are working on in Johnson. So, um and also, I saw David Manning was on earlier. Uh, the last performance I had in Johnson was um, for the um, Dabble Day. All right, so we got all the kids. Okay, let's start off with the, actually this one is for uh, for everyone. Uh, so the adults might appreciate this. Uh, I play pirate music for all ages. <laughs> You might recognize this. I keep a close watch on the shark that bites. I keep my eye patch on me all the time. I keep a float in the salty brine. I view the thank. I walk the plank. I see a very, very scary shark fin. I don't know why you had to push me in. Yes, I'll admit that I can't even swim. I view the thank. I walk the plank. Oh, do da, do da, do da. Yo ho 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 ho. 
All right. Here's a song called Shark in the Dark. And every time you hear me say shark, put a shark fin on your head. Shark in the dark, sneaking round out of sight. Shark in the dark, watch your left and watch your right. Shark in the dark, gotta get a little by. Shark, good job, Doug. Open up an appetite when you see those eyes. Big surprise. Shark in the dark, quite a fright. Shark in the dark. What it's gonna do, shark in the dark. We don't even have a clue, shark in the dark. Searching for a snack to chew, shark in the dark. Starting to get hungry too when you see the fin and a toothy grin. It's a shark in the dark. Boo, boo. Charlotte, Abby, boo! Did I get ya? <laughs> Did I scare ya? All right, here's the song by request. Uh, for Charlotte and Abby. And then the other kids, it's about my fictional sister, Pearl the Purple Pirate Princess. If you know the song, sing along. If you don't know it, sing along. Pearl the Purple Pirate Princess, she's as happy as can be. Pearl the Purple Pirate Princess, won't you sail the seas with me? Her favorite color was red, or was it blue? I guess she couldn't choose. My sister couldn't make up her mind what color she liked better, the color red or the color blue. So she mixed them up together and got a purple hue. Okay, wave your hands in the air like you just don't care. Pearl the purple pirate princess, she's as happy as can be. Pearl the purple pirate princess, won't you sail the seas with me? Okay, I've got one more song, but I want to uh, thank you, thank you. Um, want to let you know, uh, I've been doing um, live Facebook streaming um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m., three songs at 3. You can also find me on YouTube and Spotify and Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so does everyone like to have fun? Yay. Yeah, okay, okay. So uh, I have someone on board my ship who doesn't like to have fun. I know, hard to believe, but uh, this guy is a pirate party pooper. And whenever you hear me say pirate party, can you guys say pooper? It's, it's probably going to be hard to get the kids to say pooper. Uh, but here we go. Pirate party pooper. Pirate party. Pooper. pooper. Pirate party. Pooper. Pirate party. Pooper. You say you are bored with the ship and crew. With everything on board, you don't know what to do. You were super duper and really quite a trooper, but now you're just a pirate, a pirate party. Pooper! Pirate party. Pooper! Pirate Thank you, Johnson, one of my favorite ports. <laughs> Thanks, Rock and Ron. Thank you, Thank you Ron. Ron. Jellyfish five. Thank you, Eric. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.